Hello, singers on social media, and thank you for tuning in as I do this, or maybe you'll watch it later. I decided rather spontaneously to just do a little bit of Facebook Live uh, to talk about whether or not locking our knees can make us pass out or faint. Um, and so I just decided to do this rather spontaneously. So hopefully if you didn't catch my heads up, you'll, you'll join me later because I want to know what your thoughts are and what your experience has been around this. The reason that this came up for me is that yesterday I was working with a student and we were doing uh, an exercise for to promote free airflow. And having taught this exercise for quite a while, I'm aware that once they start doing really well with it, they may get a little bit lightheaded. I don't know why. My hypothesis is that because the breath is moving so much more than they're used to, there may be more oxygen going to the brain and that make makes them feel a little bit dizzy. Uh, but it doesn't really matter why, it's just important to be aware of because I don't want my students fainting in the middle of a lesson if they get lightheaded. So when I saw that the student was looking a little bit woozy, I asked them if they were okay and they said, oh yes, I feel a little faint. It must be because I was locking my knees. And I thought, what? And then I remembered years ago, some 20 years ago, uh, I taught at a school called the Carver Center for the Arts in Towson, Maryland. I was working with high school aged singers. It's a magnet arts high school. And so I was uh, in charge of organizing the vocal prime uh, students. And I remembered hearing them, some of them who had been active in choral singing, explain to me that they were concerned about locking their knees because it might make them faint. And at the time I thought, eh, it doesn't really make sense, but okay. And back then, I knew very little about anatomy. I knew very little about, you know, mecha the mechanics of, of breathing. Uh, this was before, a couple years before I certified as a personal trainer for the first time. So it didn't really sound like that could be what's happening. Um, and, uh, but then I just filed it away. But now my student's telling me this and now I'm supposed to know, right? I'm supposed to know why locking your knees makes you faint or if that is a thing that happens. So I thought about it and I couldn't see any reason why it would. And then I tried it myself, I locked my knees back and I did feel uh, that it, it created sort of anterior pelvic tilt, which kind of locked up my lower back, sort of held my little ribs in place a little bit. And I thought, yes, that will definitely uh, impede range of motion for your diaphragm. It's gonna make it harder for you to get a full low breath when you're standing in that position. But that still doesn't make sense to me why um, why would uh, that make you faint? Um, and so I decided to just look around and see what I could find. And I typed in Google, you know, um, lock knees pass out. And I was expecting, when you Google for things like that are wellness related, usually the first things that come up will be a MD, you know, MD.com or, um, or the Mayo Clinic or something, which will explain like why this might happen, why this might cause this health problem and what you should do about it if it happens. I got none of that. What I got was a lot of discussion on Reddit and other places. And then I found, uh, and I posted it elsewhere on my page, you can find it, uh, a little news clip that uh, a team had done because a member of their staff had been interviewing some people on camera and fainted on camera. So they decided to look into this and do a segment on it. Well, they went and they interviewed a doctor. They didn't really specify what the doctor's specialty was, but they work. In, they, they were working in um, in the ER, I think. You can, you can watch the video. And the doctor said that yes, when you lock your knees, it means that the blood can't get to the brain because the blood is going to pool in your legs and then the blood doesn't get to your brain and then you might faint. I'm sure that he said it more elegantly like this, but I still thought that is not how anything works. This is not how anything works. So um, I wanted to jump on Facebook Live and tell you what my speculation is, why I think that it might cause faintness if you lock your knees or why when people pass out or faint after standing for long periods of time, because that's what we're talking about, why that might be. And what it seems to me is that 
Locking your knees will impede range of motion for your diaphragm and it will lock other things up as well, right? So whenever you are in a position where you are holding body parts, where like you are stabilizing your standing position so that you don't fall down while you're doing other things, maybe you are singing, um, because I always hear this from choral singers, but then when I was looking around online, I see that some, this sometimes is thought to happen during things like military training when, uh, when soldiers. Uh, are constrained to have to stand for long periods of time. Um, that standing for long periods of time under certain circumstances can cause fainting. Um, so if you are locking up your knees, which then locks up your lower back, which then impedes range of motion for your ribcage and diaphragm, you're going to be breathing less. You're going to be taking in less oxygen. Therefore, there is less oxygen available to go to your brain. And yes, when you are holding yourself, it's going to sort of restrict circulation more than it would if you were just sort of like moving freely and everything circulating. Um, but your blood does not pool in your legs. Yes, it may take it a little bit longer to get all the way through your system when you're standing up than, for example, when you're lying down because then gravity is helping you. Your circulatory system doesn't have to fight gravity. But to me, it seems that mostly what's happening if you are standing for long periods of time and then you end up fainting, it's just because there is not as much breathing happening. There is not as much oxygen going in and out of your system, and there's less oxygen going to your head. Meanwhile, if you are also singing, you are using your breath as a sort of multitasking thing. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're taking in less oxygen with every breath, but you're taking longer to exhale, right? Because over the course of the phrase, it's a very long phrase, and so you're not breathing as frequently, even though you're breathing very fully when you sing. So there are just additional demands being placed on the system on the system when you have to stand there and sing for a while that will get exacerbated if you lock your knees or do anything else that is going to impede range of motion for your diaphragm, your rib cage, keeping your stomach too tight or locking up your lower back. It's just going to make the whole thing a lot less efficient. Now, here's the thing. You know, I do I want to hear because it's, it turns out that uh, before I get to the here's the thing thing, um, I asked several other students and they had all heard this, that for choral singers, you must be very careful not to lock your knees because you may faint. And one of them even told me about having a colleague of theirs faint and fall off the riser. Fortunately, they were okay. Uh, and now they've got a great story to tell, uh, but this is a thing that happens. Well, why would standing for long periods of time be something that would be dangerous to do because you might faint. It just seems like we should be designed better than that. And certainly uh, you can think of people whose job it is to be on their feet, sometimes for hours at a time, uh, who then tend not to faint. The first thing that comes to mind to me is immediately the conductor, maybe the choral conductor. If they're conducting uh, an oratorio that could last, you know, in excess of two or three hours, they are standing for a very, very long time. They're moving around very dynamically, but there's nothing to stop them from locking their knees. And I don't want to run that experiment. I don't want to like ask the choral conductor, like lock your knees up and then conduct the show and let's see if you faint. Um, it just seems like the human movement system is not designed so poorly that we would not be able to stand for long periods of time without fainting. But look at where all of this comes from. This is, this is sort of the rabbit hole that I fell down when I was thinking about this. Um, why would it be difficult for us to stand for long periods of time? Well, consider that we are constrained to sit still quietly for very long periods of time. Most of us in this culture, I'm here in the US, but I know that it's this way elsewhere as well. Um, from the age of five or six until young adulthood, we are expected to sit still quietly in our chairs, in our classrooms, um, while information is being fed to us, the information that we are supposed to have, and so we must pay attention. It is not a natural thing for a child to sit still like that. Um, the kind of conditioning and pressure that it takes to get a small child to sit still like that. I know all of us went through this, but that doesn't make it make any more sense. I mean, this is just the way our educational system has been since I'm, I'm gonna guess around the Industrial Revolution. Um, our bodies don't wanna do that. Our bodies wanna move, they wanna breathe, they wanna run around, they wanna explore all of our movement possibilities, but then we have to sit and be good 
and it's scary because if you don't sit and be good and be quiet then somebody may you know complain or you may get in trouble um, so not only are we sitting still I'm going to hypothesize we're also shutting down our breathing a little bit because that will render you further immobile less excited less at risk to start making a lot of noise and running around and getting in trouble and we just get used to this um, but then we're supposed to be able to do other things we're supposed to be able to do things like stand for the length of a rehearsal um, and it takes coordination and energy and good muscle length tension relationships to be able to stand for a long period of time especially when you're doing other interesting things like having to hold a folder if you're in a chorus right that's putting you know that's putting some load on your shoulders uh, and when you're accustomed to not doing anything like that then probably the most efficient way it's going to seem to your movement deprived body your somewhat breath deprived body is to just lock everything in place so we sort of lock into a position where like we can hold the folder and not have to worry about dropping it because we've got other things on our mind right we've got to sing this art we've got to get together and and watch the conductor and listen to everything that's going on around us and make sure we're like singing with good technique and in tune and remembering all the things and then participating in this glorious experience of music making together so we don't want anything to go wrong and so what we do is what we have been trained to do we learn to turn off the parts of ourselves that we don't need we don't need our knees, we don't need our legs. What we need to do is just kind of like lock into position so that we will be able to hold the folder, turn the pages, do our singing, um, and not fall down, right? Not fall down. But the thing that we're doing that helps us to stand up may end up being the thing that makes us fall down. Uh, because as we have seen, if your knees lock, it's going to lock up your lower back, it's going to impede motion for your rib cage, for your diaphragm, and then you're doing this multitasking thing where you were singing long phrases, which means that you were breathing less frequently, and eventually the oxygen that your brain needs to continue to be able to hold you up and function, it's going to valve off very slowly, and yes, I think this must be the explanation for why people do this. Um, but let's again talk about that this really isn't okay that our bodies aren't instinctively capable of standing with good dynamic alignment holding a folder engaging in music making with everybody around us while still having access to ourselves from the waist down while still being able to stand at ease so that you know where your sternum is where you want it to be when you're singing your shoulders are where you want them to be when you're singing and the strenuous task of like holding the folder is not going to interfere with that um i don't think there's a quick fix for this my recommendation is we should just you know have a symposium and change our educational systems so that the kids aren't having to sit there all the time um but since systems change takes a long time i think what we can do individually is just explore what kind of movements do we want to make now especially when we have to stand for long periods of time so if you're standing in line waiting to get into a theater or a restaurant i know it's been a while since we've done that sort of thing but hopefully it's going to happen again um standing in line at the post office who does that anymore um but it's going to happen that you're going to find yourself standing in line to check out at the grocery store or at the post office and you can take the opportunity to just check in with your legs while you're standing there how do they feel are they locking into position to hold you up is that causing something to happen in your lower back what does it feel like to breathe in that position and if you're carrying some boxers or something at the post office you know how is that affecting the whole thing so my recommendation is just that you explore like what are your postural choices what are your movement choices when you're standing in line somewhere when you're standing there in the choral rehearsal, what do your legs want to do? Um, and that's the inroad. That's the inroad. I don't think that there is any one fitness regimen that is going to be the right fitness regimen for everybody. Um, and that's after being a fitness trainer for more than, well, almost 20 years, like just after 
the incident where I had no idea what could possibly be making the kids sneeze lock up when they were when they were talking about that. Um, but I know that our bodies evolve individually. I know that we have what I think of as our shared trauma of having to have sat there for more than a decade without being able to move. And then as adults, we're trying to, we're supposed to figure out like how do our bodies want to move now that they're not making us sit there anymore. Cause we've internalized a lot of that. Um, and often artists, musicians, uh, often ironically, cause music making is a movement activity, but ironically, um, many of us did not get to participate in things like sports in high school cause we had to choose. Right. You can do the school musical, you can do the honors choral ensembles, or you can be on the softball team. Um, but the schedules were just too much. And so musicians, I mean, I used to think of my head, my, myself as sort of a head on a stick when I was in high school and then during my college years. I wasn't yet a singer, I was a clarinetist. So my body was really useful for like carrying the clarinet around and then sitting down and playing some more. Um, uh, and I'm just kind of spiraling off on a tangent here, uh, but if you, if you can just realize that your body is the product of all of your experiences, your musical experiences, your singing training has probably conditioned you to breathe more fully than the average person, um, but are you able to do that under all circumstances? Uh, it helps to notice how your body is holding up what we think of as the instrument, you know, because we've got to have a strong base of support for the breathing and for the larynx, but that base of support still needs to be dynamic because when you breathe, it's really your whole body that breathes. Take a moment to just breathe and think about that. You inhale, maybe you feel it moving into your abdomen. Maybe you feel your ribs lift and separate. It's going to be different for everybody. But when you breathe and you inhale and it displaces all the stuff in your abdomen, it stretches out everything. And that goes all the way down to your toes. It goes all the way up to the top of your head, even if you don't feel it, because we are all held together by this web of connective tissue, this fascia that integrates all of the body parts, all of the components of your singer's instrument. Um, and so, at any point that that movement, that all of your movements kind of gets cut off or blocked, it's going to limit your movement potential. Now, it may seem that when you're just sit standing there for quite a while while you're singing uh, in a performance or doing other, any other activity that requires you to stand in a fairly stationary position uh, while you're doing something else especially, um, it may seem more efficient to just sort of like lock into position but if your alignment, if your posture, if your presence can be sort of poised, dynamic, ready, even if you're not moving anywhere, you're still moving because you're breathing and you're singing and you're waiting and you're listening. All of this is so dynamic. So listen with your whole body, sing with your whole body. Be very curious about what your ankles, your knees, your lower back, your ribs are up to while you're doing this. Um, and take an approach that goes beyond, oh, I'd better not lock up my knees so I don't faint. Take an approach that's more, I am fully present with every cell of my being so that I am ready to express myself when my next entrance is, and I am listening attentively and responding with everything I am to all the music making that's going on around me. And yeah, because we have these habits that we need to overcome after many, many years of sitting, do check in with your knees from time to time. Do check in with your lower back from time to time. Do check in with your shoulders to make sure that you are holding your folder in a way that feels dynamic and supported and integrated with everything else that you're doing. Um, but I think it's not quite so simple as unlock your knees so you don't faint. So those of you who were with me here today, thank you for tuning in. And those of you who get to look at this later, um, I would love to hear about your experiences uh, around this and your thoughts and your strategies for how do you stand and hold your folder when you're singing in chorus.